So I am working on this K. I'm trying to make it kind of match the, uh, the multiple anchor points that are in some of the other letters. And so to do that, I'm going to use my pencil tool, but I'm not going to make it perfectly smooth. And I'm just going to very gently tweak some of these edges. And you see how it just adds some anchor points. It's basically I'm making something that's very clean and computer generated into something that looks a little bit more hand done. Because my other typeface already has that very slight wonkiness. That doesn't mean I have to do it everywhere. And K is a tricky letter because it takes up a lot of positive space. It really cuts up the space behind it. And so there's lots that can kind of call undue attention if it's not handled well. I do my best. And remember, there's always this smooth tool if things get a little hard to redraw, and that will kind of even things out for you. I'm going to use the smooth tool on this A because it's got a lot of that wonkiness, too much in some areas, even though that's just built into the typeface. When you do a typeface and then you create outlines, it does a, a really faithful job of just matching whatever that vector was as a type tool. It's just with all the modifications we did to the type tool, especially the type on path tool, it starts to shift these things. And it depends on how the original typeface was designed. This one was designed with a lot of anchors. And so those all get shifted around as we move it. as we stretch it, as we bold it. But I like how all of the edges are slightly rounded. So obviously I'm gonna to need to make that V match. And I might even just recreate the V. <laughs> That's the other fun thing for text des type designers is that every letter doesn't need to be wholly new elements you've designed for one letter you can use in other letters, right? So for this W, this W already has a V in it, right? From this typeface. So if I get to the W to where I like it, and I like how it slightly widens at the edge, especially being the, the very end of lake view. So what if I now duplicate that? So just take that W, Command C, copy it, you know, edit, copy, paste in place. Now I've got a second W to play with, right? Maybe move it out here so I see what I'm doing. Take my eraser and just cut out the V. Here's my small selection tool. Cut what's left. Use my pencil tool. It's just like cutting with magic scissors, right? So I cut a V from the W, then I can put it over the top of my other typeface V, which is at the right angle, taking up the right kind of space. And then I can stretch it in different ways. So for instance, I can actually select just one edge of it 
see. No, I want this one. Oh, I need to lock the other V. It doesn't keep selecting it. So I'm going to select just top rung here and then just move it up and out. Uh, let's get the whole side. Or I might even cut it and just rotate it. That might work better. So I've locked the V that I'm overlapping so I don't affect it. And now I can select one side or the other and stretch them and rotate them. That's nice. Now the other side. All right, so now I've got that V in two shapes on top of my old V, and I can merge them all together. Select them all, and then use Pathfinder. So now it's one V that I can smooth and finish. And it really is a kind of a combination of those two typefaces. within the, the type blocking and setting that I've chosen. Same thing with the E. I think I'll, uh, well, I'll, I'll show you that same skill set again. I'll take the I, duplicate it, paste it, make it overlap with the E, To thicken that E a little bit. Copy it, paste it again, flip it. The I is a really nice text element to use because it's in so many things. Let's see. Add it there. Copy it, paste it, add it there. Copy it, paste it, add it there. And now let's merge all those together. Select them all with, <coughs> with the E. Let's make sure I have the right E, it's the one next to the W. And then merge them together. So now I can take this E, which just has a little bit of wonkiness now built in, and then use the pencil tool, clean it all up, readability really matters, space between letters really matters, how you treat the corners, the serifs, the decorations, the bellies, all of that really matters in the feeling that you want the type to have. So now you can kind of see pretty clearly college looks even. If anything, I can bold in the sides of the O a little bit. Maybe I will. Lakeview looks nice and even. Northeast doesn't quite yet because I haven't addressed that yet. But this is fully customizing the type. And then there's the problem with Lakeview overlapping my coloring or my uh, spot illustration there. But I can deal with that by using an outline in Photoshop.
So I don't need to worry about that right now. I just want black type for right now. And you can see that black type has enough that goes into it that we have to worry about. So if I want to thicken the sides of this O, I'm just going to use the pencil tool. Actually, I'll simply grab these anchor points that make the side of the O with the lasso and then use my small selection and then just pull it out a little bit thicker on that side and then do the same thing on the other side, just the outside edge. This is so fun, so much easier than trying to ink it by hand. Yep, I think that looks better. And save it. Now for the northeast, I'm just going to try to address a lot at once. So it's the O. Hold down shift. It's the R. It's the T. It's the H. It's the E, but it's not the A. And it's the S and it's the T that are all, oh, not the A. Hold down command. Get rid of the A. Ah. Hold down command. Ah. You know, let's just do command and then I can just click them all. Shift wants to do all the ones that are connecting between. Oh, not the end. Hold down command. All right. So I just want to add a bold stroke to all of these. I had already started with the O, or I had played with the O. So let's undo the O because I think that's a different typeface. And so what do I want to do? Yeah, let's add a little bit of a stroke to it. Choose solid black for that stroke. Why did it go to white? <laughs> there we go. So that's about the right thickness. I can play with making it a little wonkier by making it wavy as opposed to... Yeah, I like that. As opposed to always super solid. Though it's a little, little strange on the E there, but I can work with that. And now I'm going to say object out path outline stroke and then merge them with the pathfinder tool. Now with the O, change that stroke to black. And take it way down. I think I was actually using the stroke to slim it down. And I'll do that, so I'll change it to white just so you can see it. Increase the stroke a little bit, maybe like that. And now with it all selected, so let me select all the O, I can subtract. Oh, I need to create outlines first. So object, path, outline, stroke. Now I can subtract the white from the black. So you can use the stroke not just to add to it, but also to take away from it. Then I'll use the large selection tool. Stretch it a little bit. Play with narrowing it a little bit. Angling it. And I can always, this is the beauty, I can always move it down and out a little bit. I can fix the kerning myself because I get to select each letter individually. And then with the N, I can just move that into place. Okay, same thing with the E here. That's the only one that got the kerning and angles got a little weird with my outlining. So I'm just going to hand place these letters and the kerning and spacing of them. And I might take that whole thing and just move that up a tiny bit. 